Hey, what are you doing? The chief just wants me to check if there's something left him before we close it up. I won't be long. Okay. Entering a space can be dangerous because the atmosphere inside may not support life. It's essential that you stop and think, am I following procedures? Have I taken the necessary precautions? If not, you'll put people at risk, including yourself. The IMO defines an enclosed space as an area on board which has limited openings for entry and exit, inadequate ventilation or is not designed for continuous worker occupancy. But any space can be dangerous, not just those that are defined as enclosed. They may contain poisonous or flammable gas. They might have insufficient oxygen to support life. Or workers may be overcome by a dangerous enclosed space atmosphere because they have not taken precautions. An unconscious crew member in an enclosed space is very difficult to recover. This is because of the hazardous nature of the space and the obstructions present. Rescuers also need to wear breathing apparatus, which takes time to safely don, and the equipment itself makes a rescue operation more difficult. On a vessel, there should be a list of enclosed spaces, including cargo spaces, double bottoms, fuel tanks, ballast tanks, cargo pump rooms, cargo compressor rooms, coffer dams, chain lockers, void spaces, duct keels, inter-barrier spaces, boilers, engine crankcases, scavenge air receivers, sewage tanks, and the adjacent connected spaces. An adjacent connected space is a normally unventilated space that is not used for cargo, but which may share the same atmospheric characteristics with the enclosed space. These include access hatches to tanks and holds, a cargo space access way, and areas where trunking or cabling connects to an enclosed space. These might not be listed as enclosed spaces, but they must be treated as such because they are potentially dangerous environments. If there is any doubt about a space on a vessel, it should be classed as enclosed. Do not immediately enter. Instead, you should follow an appropriate entry procedure in order to stay safe. Remember, any space on board a vessel can be dangerous. One major hazard in an enclosed space is the atmosphere. The oxygen level might be below that required to support life. There may also be poisonous gas present, such as hydrogen sulfide, nitrogen and carbon monoxide, which can be fatal when breathed in. And there may also be long-term health effects that are caused by the carcinogen benzene. There may also be flammable hydrocarbon gas present and hydrogen sulfide, which are both flammable and toxic. You should always use a meter 
to assess the level of oxygen before entering an enclosed space. This should be done at various levels within a large space and particularly at the work area. Normal air contains approximately 21% oxygen. But this is reduced when rusting is present, as the rusting process uses oxygen from the enclosed air. These kinds of spaces include water ballast tanks, chain lockers, and duct keel spaces. But they can be any area where rusting is taking place. Portable oxygen testing equipment consists of a sensor with a readout, which indicates the percentage of oxygen present within the space atmosphere. The device is used by a person in the space or remotely using a probe or sample tube. Wear breathing apparatus to confirm levels of oxygen in a large space or if there is any doubt about the level of oxygen in the enclosed space atmosphere. Cargo risk assessment will indicate tests required for associated flammable or toxic vapors. When testing an enclosed space, the IMO states that the atmosphere of the space should be tested as appropriate with properly calibrated instruments to ascertain acceptable levels of oxygen and acceptable levels of flammable or toxic vapors. When testing for explosive flammable mixtures, gas test equipment gives results based on the lower flammable limit. Ideally, entry is made with a reading of zero LFL. However, a reading of up to 1% is a safety allowance. This type of explosimeter test equipment will probably not indicate the toxic nature of the atmosphere. There are human exposure limits that make the space unsafe to work in for any length of time if exceeded. The text shows the IMO recommendation, which is not more than 50% of the occupational exposure limit. Depending on the nature of the vessel and its cargo, other toxic gases may be present and there will be appropriate testing equipment supplied for these. As a minimum requirement under the IMO and SOLAS, your ship must carry portable test equipment capable of testing for oxygen, flammable gas, hydrogen sulfide and carbon monoxide. There are many testing devices sold that tend to vary in their functionality. As risk assessments indicate the possible gas present, suitable equipment can then be purchased by a company and used on board. A common type of system testing for many types of toxic substances is the Draeger tube. To do this, place a tube in the equipment for a specific gas and draw an air sample from the enclosed space atmosphere through it. The tube contains a reactive chemical that detects the specific gas and changes color, with the level of color indicating the amount of gas present in the sample. Additionally, semiconductor-based testing devices are available, and these are also designed to test for a specific toxic substance. We know that the atmosphere of enclosed spaces can be dangerous, but there are other hazards and associated risks that must be considered. These include slips, trips and falls inside the space, difficulty getting in or out because of a small or restricted entrance, and very confined areas where it is difficult to maneuver, leading to the increased risk of a worker becoming trapped or damaging PPE. Similarly, poor lighting can increase the risk of walking into objects. High temperatures can cause heat exhaustion. And there is also increased risk of dropped objects and drowning within the space. When deciding what PPE to wear, a lot depends on the nature of the work, the state of the enclosed space and what was previously within the space. It is a SOLAS requirement that persons entering enclosed spaces should be provided with calibrated and tested multi-gas detectors that monitor the levels of oxygen, carbon monoxide and other gases as appropriate.
Alongside your testing equipment, PPE should protect you from any physical and exposure damage. It's important that workers know how to wear PPE, which typically includes a coverall to protect the body from exposure to harmful substances, a hard hat to protect the head from injuries, and gloves to protect the hands from exposure to oil and chemicals. You will also need glasses or goggles, ear defenders, and boots. On certain vessels, more specialized PPE is worn to protect against specific substances. When working at height in an enclosed space, you will require fall protection and will need to be especially safety conscious, as these surfaces can be very slippery and falls can happen easily. It is also recommended that you should wear a full body harness, which assists any rescue required. It's essential that you prepare properly before entering an enclosed space. Ensure the space is free from any liquids, that all machinery has cooled down, and that the space is well ventilated. A competent person should undertake a full risk assessment and then complete an enclosed space entry checklist. An enclosed space entry permit should then be filled out and signed off by a responsible person and the worker in charge of the task, both of whom should be trained in enclosed space hazard recognition, evaluation, control and elimination. According to amendments made to SOLAS Chapter 3 in January 2015, crew members need to be trained and drilled for enclosed space entry which should take place at least every two months. The crew who are assigned to undertake the work will be briefed on the operation with a focus on safety. This will include potential hazards of the space, which may be rusting, lighting and limited access spaces, and individual roles will be assigned. Other members of the crew also need to be informed as to the time and nature of the work and lockout tagout should be used on any pipelines in the space. The enclosed space needs to be fully ventilated for long enough to ensure its atmosphere is safe. To ensure a representative sample is taken, ventilation should be stopped for 10 minutes before the pre-entry atmosphere tests are started. Initially, a large space is tested remotely with a rubber sample tube attached to the meter. It needs to be tested for oxygen and toxic gas levels if they are suspected to be present, with each reading recorded. There should be 21% oxygen present. Flammable gas or vapor should ideally be 0%, but not more than 1% of the lower flammable limit, and not more than 50% of the occupational exposure limit of any toxic vapors and gases. Tests for specific toxic contaminants, such as benzene, may also be necessary, depending on the nature of the previous contents of the space. It's also essential that there's an effective rescue plan with emergency equipment standing by. Before use, personal atmosphere testing devices should be calibrated and tested. Although each company has their own permits, an enclosed space entry permit will generally include details of the space to be entered and the work to be undertaken. It will feature the test results of the space atmosphere, the measures in place to ensure job safety, including equipment, and any requirements for workers to ensure their safety. As with other permits, it will have the date and time of the entry, the duration of the permit, and the signatures of the responsible person, the competent person, and possibly the workers responsible for carrying out the work, as well as any restrictions or specific requirements of the operation, and a signature by the responsible person that cancels the permit. The permit may also have a record of work completed and an attached checklist. Before signing the permit, the responsible person should ensure that all requirements are in place. No work should be undertaken other than that authorized. 
and adequate lighting should be provided, as well as a backup torch. Only enter an enclosed space when a permit is in force and follow the entry procedures at all times. Treat all enclosed spaces with caution, even if it appears that the space is safe because there had previously been people inside. A space that was safe earlier may not be safe now. When working in an enclosed space, continuously assess risk. Your life and the lives of the people around you may depend on you doing your job safely and effectively.